Good afternoon, fellow stalkers. Today, we're here to present uh, how you have enabled lifting and shifting some of the e-commerce applications to the cloud platform. I'll start with introduction myself. Uh, I am Rupesh Dalbisoy, working as senior architect cloud platform in Walmart. I've been very focused in working how we take some of the non-cloud native applications and moving to the cloud platform. Hi. I'm Gerald Butalo. Uh, I'm a senior manager at Walmart Labs, and I manage the cloud operations teams that manage uh, the OpenStack uh, clouds. And I also manage uh, the middleware team, which basically has, uh, we run the like asda.com or sams.com or walmartcanada.com. Uh, uh, we manage these platforms, and primarily we are here today to talk about how we have taken uh, some of these apps or these websites and moved them, uh, lifted and shifted them onto the cloud. Uh, Rupesh has played an active role uh, as an architect with uh, my team, which has uh, enabled us to lift and shift these applications into the cloud. And uh, that's what we are here to talk about today. So uh, these are a few of the topics we are going to cover today. What was a problem that uh, we encountered? We'll share uh, some of the challenges we had. Uh, we'll walk through what was our approach, uh, how you can lift and shift applications uh, by just making a few tweaks uh, that what we did. Uh, we necessarily didn't want to rewrite apps and move them to the cloud, so uh, there had to be the least number of changes, the fewest changes that we could make. and move them to the cloud. Uh, w the key ingredients for accepting change. So what does it take to move these uh, apps over? Uh, what we achieved? And why did we use one ops? Uh, and then the last is Q&A. So uh, if you have questions, hold them. We have a sufficient time at the end uh, to cover Q&A. And, uh, We'll try to complete it ahead of time a little bit so that we have more time for Q&A. So uh, what you see is uh, a nice bus, uh, but it doesn't look like the modern day bus today. So we're using this bus as an uh, analogy for us. Uh, we have these legacy environments, and we have the apps uh, or the websites sitting on these environments. Uh, what happens is uh, this bus runs really well. It looks nice. It functions perfectly well. But in today's date, the business, uh, the developers, they, they want functionality to be delivered quickly. They want additional benefits, additional functionality, and they want to scale. All this has to be done quickly. So. We, we took this and we said, hey, you know, every year uh, we take this bus, uh, we drive this, and we run the sites on this. But how can we go quicker? How can we go faster? Uh, so this bus is basically what happens to us every year during the holiday, right? So the app teams, they want to add more functionality. Uh, I, with functionality, with year-over-year -year growth, you have more customers. So you have to scale horizontally. Uh, you add more benefits. You add more functionality. And you have all these variety of teams that come over and are working together on this bus with you. And you have the same environments. So you have environments. You have functionality. You have business uh, functionality to be delivered. And we are all on this bus together, and you know, then you got to do this stress test. You got to make sure everything is working fine. And again, with the year-over-year -year growth, you have additional traffic that comes along, or additional customers that are also along with you on this bus. So, how do you go faster? This is what our Cyber Monday, our, our Black Friday looks like, right? So, you, you can have this beautiful bus. You have all these teams, you have the functionality, you have scaled up, and it works well. It's still working well, 
But now you have everybody on this environment. And as most of us in the software world know, that you want to go fast, you want to automate, and you want to scale quickly. So we, we use this picture in the analogy where you know we add all this hardware, and you're running with all of it on this truck. You add all this functionality, and you're on it. Uh, you scale, and you then get all the customers also on it. But what does the business want? Again, the question comes back, right? Uh, the customers want quick delivery, speed to deliver. And if you want, you have all these lines of application code, you have these variety of applications, you want automation. You want a one-click deployment. You want everything to be automated from a centralized location. But with so many variety of environments, with all the bare metal in place, you have to have like a separate automation for gold copy, separate for monitoring, separate for scaling, separate for performance testing. And you have all these places uh, all over. You, you have these bits and pieces all over the place. So uh, that's where you need multiple teams to take over. Right. I mean, uh, just to continue on that, like in, 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 in any traditional environment, like suppose you uh, a, a server becoming to convert to the actual a, a applications, there are a, quite a few people, a functional team works together, right? It starts with the team, they basically lay out the, lay out the operating system is there, then go through the networking team, they lay out the networking uh, 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 VLAN to there, they put the right protocol there, they put the right firewall there. Then it goes to the middleware team, uh, they basically configure the uh, app stack on there, it could be a web server, it could be a Tomcat, it could be your some of the other middleware components. Then it goes to the release engineering team who basically lay out your uh, latest, greatest artifact to that. So once all those four, five functions to come together, then finally your server or that particular environment is ready to do the functional testing or is useful for the dev or the QA team. Right? So it takes, again, if you look at late, like it takes from weeks to the month's time frame. Right? Again, I'm not saying like these are highly uh, heavy touch, uh, manual tasks. Every functional team have their own automations. Every team do their, do their best to automate their, their task. But this is not a single uh, one end-to-end -end, uh, automation systems. You have to go through various different teams to make your product finalize that. Right? So as we, uh, as we come to, uh, here, like we all faced very similar challenges that we talked about, right? Uh, the legacy platform, um, as you know, like it's very difficult for us to uh, scale on the legacy platform. Scaling and hardware, by the nature of the bare metal gate provisions, it takes a good amount of time to, to scale the hardwares and uh, scaling the team. Like you need good amount of team to provision those servers, provision those environments, and get it ready on the right time for your applications team, for your QA team to be getting used. So when you are when you are in a, like in a, a very uh, legacy or like a bare metal mode, you you will be incurring a lot of infrastructure cost, right? Since you cannot scale very frequently, you ended up in having procuring a lot of hardware, keeping it there. Maybe all those hardwares may not be useful for every day. They might be useful useful for some of your peak season, some of your holidays. But since the nature of the scalability is not there, you ended up in uh, procuring a lot of hardware. So there is a lot of infrastructure overhead cost doing that way. Talking about, again, same lead time expansions so and the limit of uh, automation. So now that we know like we are kind of like uh, very much correlated with similar kind of problem that we are all dealing uh, Let's go. Let's look at like how we have been trying to tackle these situations, right? We all understand like moving from a, a legacy or from a bare metal environment to a cloud platform will address some of these issues. Now the question is how we are going to do that? Whether I'm going to rewrite my entire applications? Should I make a microservices uh, based services which will be make uh, very SOA based so that? applications can be running on the cloud platform. Can I make my applications fully cloud native? Then only I can consider to deploy into the cloud platform. Well, I, think, I don't think answer is, uh, I mean, the answer is no to that. 
we have been doing this. We have been taking some of these applications, which are like non-cloud native, which are uh, which are used to be running on the bare metal, and converted them and lipped and shipped them to the to the cloud platform. Now let's talk about how we have done that. Right? What is our approach? To start with, we we form a small team. We call an Ubler team, uh, which uh, started with a combination of uh, uh, cloud architects and uh, partner with our associates from the applications architect. So we form a team. We uh, talked about various application stacks. We go more deeper, having series of workshops to conduct to understand how the application is, is configured. What are the different uh, steps required for the applications to be functioning as per the requirement? Uh, it could be uh, how one app talks to another app, how, what is the dependency between um, a, a, a single compute or single server to connect into the another services. So these are, these are some of the findings, uh, or these are some of the exercises we did to identify what does it take to run into the cloud. Because the cloud runs slightly different model than your bare metal. Bare metal. So we are trying to find out, or we are trying to come out of this uh, requirement and trying to map with the use case, like how we are going to run into the cloud. Now, some of the things may not work as is in the cloud, right? I mean, for example, like in bare metal, you used to, you used to for any file sharing, we used to use NFS. So we understand it's like we are not going to use the NFS in the cloud. So we are kind of like, uh, talk to the application to see like how we can replace that, right? I mean, not necessarily application has to be rewritten, but certainly application has to be tweaked a little bit to make it work on the cloud platform. So as a part of the work serve, what we are figuring out, like what are the three things that we should be doing to make it a successful migration, right? We definitely look at like, yes, application need not to be written as, uh, need not to be completely rewritten, but certainly application has to change certain deployment strategy, right? And we'll talk about that. What are the different strategy that we followed? And and the third and the key and the key factor is like, what is the? We need to definitely have to have an orchestration tool, which will work and which will also help in operationalize on the top of the cloud. So um, talking more about like, what are the different changes that uh, we ha we will basically consider to do that on the applications layer. Um, Cloud, I mean, certain things is we understand any VM can go down any point of time, right? But that should not impact your application's availability. So the very key point that we focus on, like, we take your applications and deploy into the multiple clouds, multiple data centers, so that we maintain their very high uh, availability. Now, there are certain applications be designed not to run in, in multi-instances fashions, right? There could be just like we never tried that, or it could be there are some real technical stickiness behind it which will make it not to work. So we are trying to break those stickiness so that it will be more like you can, you can run it in any number of instances. You can uh, make, make it more horizontally spread without impacting the, the functionality of the applications. Uh, I was giving the example of NFS, right? I mean, let's say you are talking, you are sharing from one application to the applications and you use file share systems. So we are kind of like breaking those two to make a JMS best where we can basically share the information through a JMS. In that cases, we don't make any, any applications or any VM to be highly sticking to a, to a particular VM. So we, we kind of like uh, remove or avoid any host to host communications, right? That is another key point, right? So the moment we remove that, uh, we ensure every application talks to the other application through a load balancer. So when any number of, when we deployed the applications, even though it is a single instance, we kind of first made a point like that application has to be deployed more than one instance so that, so that we can have a load balancer on top of that so that the communications, intra-communication to the applications can be through a load balancer. In that case, it's like if the VM is up and down, you're still not impacting anything because it's all the request is going through the the load balancer. Uh, another key point is the application has to be fully configurable through some kind of an automation or orchestration tool, right? That is another key because when when the VM is is crashing, VM is going down due to some reason. There could be various reasons why the VM can go down. Your applications, that particular VM has to come back to the same point, like how it has been how it has been supposed to be configured. What that VM was running on web server, the VM was running on an app server, 
what are the different settings on the Tomcat, what are the different settings on, the, on my data source, everything has to become as is. So if you do not have some kind of an automation or some kind of an provisioning systems, it will impact because cloud uh, being the nature, maybe one of the VM can go down and we can't rely on some kind of an um, handholding system or some kind of a manual systems to build another VM, configure, reconfigure that systems and put back into the cloud. Uh, we, of course, uh, we don't uh, avoid any kind of a static IPs because that's basically make your VM is very, very chatty or very, very uh, sticky to a particular point. So that's why we kind of remove any, any um, IP, any static IPs to the VM. So these are some of the changes, like, I mean, very high level, like we, we made, made or tweak on the applications to make it work on the cloud platform. If you can see, I mean, these changes are not, uh, need not to be your entire application to be rewritten, but these are something very high level on the deployment, uh, like how you're deploying your applications, how you're talking from one application to the another applications. These are highly focused on that, right? And we'll talk about like how we handle the entire end-to-end -end automations, end-to-end -end orchestrations, when we'll dig in more to the one-offs. So, as Rupesh mentioned, right, so we went through how, wh what we were looking and how we were looking at the applications and trying to move them over to the cloud, right? So, every year we have a uh, additional functionality, we have more traffic, we have more business, there's growth, and we have to scale these uh, environments. So we decided that you know every year this cannot be done with the e-commerce traffic, with the traffic uh, and the business that increases, we have to have a better way, a faster way, and a more efficient way to do this. Uh, and my team, one of my, at least my teams, is highly involved in scaling these environments, installing these apps, managing the gold copies, uh, and going the full nine yards, right, to do this thing. So we had to have a much more efficient way to do this because the lead time from procuring a server to installing it, racking it, cabling it, installing the apps, and all that was taking a lot of time. So we did this uh, proof of concept where we actually tweaked these apps uh, moved them to the cloud, uh, used OneOps uh, to orchestrate it, and went back to the management, went back to the business and said, hey, you know, we can actually run these things, run these environments on the cloud. Uh, but as you have been hearing from morning, technology comes last, it's people, process, and technology, right? So the key is, uh, how do you manage this change? How do you manage uh, acceptance of going on this environment or on that bus, which we showed you earlier, perfectly running, good availability, uh, scales, but it takes time, and uh, you have this lack of automation. So why do you guys want to take something that's working and move it over to the cloud, which we have never tested, and uh, it's go it can be disruptive? So we went around trying to do this uh, POC, a proof of concept, and we ha we approached it from top to bottom and bottoms up as well. So both the ways, we had multiple workshop wo workshop sessions uh, where we could demo how these applications actually worked on the cloud, right? And then you have to showcase the benefits. It's low cost. It's easy. You can scale. Uh, it's easy to scale horizontally. You can onboard apps quickly, and how easy how easy it is to use. But then came the question is, hey, will my apps perform on this cloud? Uh, so as you see the picture, right, uh, there is a little bit skepticism, like, will this work, will this not work, right? So what we did is we said, you know, no worry. Uh, we won't disrupt what's working today. It's running fine. In parallel, we went and built a dev test environment, a load test environment. Uh, we actually built a full-fledged even pro a production environment, which wasn't actually taking live traffic, but uh, close to our real production environment, right? And we ran full-fledged uh, stress tests on it. Uh, we tried to beat it up from different angles, and uh, we had very impressive results. We went back and you know showed the results, and uh, 
demoed it to the business, demoed it to the management, de demoed it to the dev teams, the various different teams, and everybody was like, yes, this really works. And uh, that's how we drove change. We got everyone to believe this actually works and actually give it a shot. And we didn't go in uh, full blast. We started moving traffic uh, slowly over. So once we got the buy-in, uh, we also showcased you know, how this can be achieved uh, in, by reducing the number of teams involved every year for scaling up, for building, for functionality, for automation to a handful of uh, teams, right? And it basically enables the self-service model uh, that every app developer wants out there, right? Every app developer wants to manage his app, automate it, and go the full uh, nine yards with it, right? And this model totally enables them to go the full nine yards from the time you uh, design, you build it, you install it, you deploy to production, and then you can manage it also by yourself. You're not dependent on 10 different teams because once you're in the cloud, uh, it takes care of the policies, the net end work, the system work, and all that is taken care of between the IaaS teams, right? So that enables uh, the app teams to go quicker and faster. As we are doing, uh, like how actually really we did that uh, after we migrating our applications to the cloud, right? These are some of the performance metrics, right? I'll go uh, each of those in detail. Uh, let's talk about, again, this is not presenting here like, okay, um, how we perform better or how, how what is the difference between running the applications in the legacy or, or bare metal versus running on a on a cloud or an open stack, right? This is like, um, see, when you migrated our applications from the a legacy or from the bare metal to the OpenStack cloud, we also clear up, we also address some of our tech debt, right? I mean, we've, we felt like some of the stack is not working, some of the technologies is not working, let's remove that out. I'll just give an example. It's like, you used to run like, uh, we have a load balancer, under load balancer, we used to have an Apache as a web server, then uh, uh, Apache Web Server is talking to the JBoss as an application server, right? Uh, we figure that out, like maybe that Apache is not functioning uh, that uh, we need to, because pretty much the Apache was doing for us like load balancing all the JBoss instances and also uploading the the certificate, uh, the SSL, and uh, and making some of the redirection. So we we when we move that to the cloud platform, uh, we basically remove the entire Apache stack, right? We can directly load balance uh, through. The, the, we basically load balance all our workers or JBoss through the load balancer one. So, I mean, that will also give us some kind of a boost on the performance. So we, uh, when you look at like how is the different, I mean, we have got different different pages, pages from browse page to search page to a heavy transaction space like cart and checkout, right? Uh, browse pages are pretty much uh, cast in the on the CDN, but the the all the real transactions comes in the cart and checkout, right? Um, so we see there is a there is a either better performance when you moved to the cloud platform. Some pages varies from 20, 30 percent. Some pages actually really perform well. So overall site performance actually in the range of like 30 to 40 percent is. Another key metrics is about we look at we measure the the instance throughput. Uh, when I'm talking about instance, instance means a single JVM. I'm talking about. Uh, we run in Tomcat and JBoss. So when an applications we are running on the bare metal. Used since the bare metal, we are not able to virtualize it. We are basically having a bare metal used to run like multiple instances there with having different different ports, right? Uh, versus compare that in a single VM, the single instance you are running on the JVM, right? So we looked at uh, like we're trying to compare like if let's say for a uh, for the given capacity uh, for a given throughput, let's say there are hundred orders are coming in, how many instances I need in in, in uh, or used to have in the legacy platform versus how many right now need on the cloud platform? We see there is a significant increase. There is a significant reduce in the number of cores that we need on the cloud platform, and this could be for many different reasons, not necessarily like running on the cloud per se. Could be like uh, because uh, apparently the, the it has a tech refresh, and the, and the we have a latest and greatest model of uh, hardware running on the cloud platform versus running on the bare metal model, right? Uh, so that is that helps in managing the overall. Uh, 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 the, uh, the data center operational costs also reduced because more number of instances we don't need to. 
Uh, also, it helps in uh, automating a lot of applications, uh, which we'll um, which talk about more on the one-ups layer. Moving? Yeah. So post-cloud migration, uh, as the picture shows, right? We had this army of people uh, doing work, running around, and now the minions are uh, pretty much sleeping out there. So basically, it gives you the self-healing capability. It gives you the auto-replace capability. It gives you uh, a lot more ease in your life of day-to-day -day work because now you have the DevOps teams. You have uh, a lot of more automation in place. Uh, with this, this pretty much enabled us to have a very smooth holiday season. It enabled us to have a, a stress-free day-to-day day where the number of tickets or issues or incidents are significantly decreased uh, because you know everything is now centrally located. There's a lot of more automation in place. Uh, there's a lot less uh, touch points that are happening along the way. So. We had a, uh, it, it was pretty much successful. The numbers uh, talk for itself, 99.99, those five nines, uh, uh, were, that was the availability for these migrated sites that we moved over. Uh, we were able to manage, uh, or rather take over billion plus page views. Uh, as, again, Rupesh earlier mentioned, so these page views, you know, if, on the, if any of you have been in e-commerce or worked on the e-commerce apps, there are CDN solutions to take care of uh, caching your page views. But within uh, the clouds or within these apps, there are millions and millions of transactions that happen where you know once you log in, uh, it looks at your inventory management systems, your order management, uh, your cart, your checkout, and these sessions cannot be cached, or these transactions cannot be cached. For this, your cloud has to perform. Uh, you have to have that SLA in place where uh, you are meeting those SLAs for these applications, for the transaction, for the connection between these two apps so that you don't have a ton of timeouts. So uh, obviously, this was uh, we met all those SLAs. Uh, it worked really well. We could take traffic. We could scale easily, auto scale up and down. Uh, it reduced the server startup time. This comes pretty handy if, in case you run into an issue. Uh, let's say you need to auto scale up on the fly. Uh, you can scale up like really quickly, right? Because now our instances are coming up in a matter of minutes. Uh, if your instance startup time takes a lot of time, you can auto scale, but you know, it's going to take you, if it takes you like 10 or 15, 20 minutes, by the time you scale up and you bring all that instances into traffic, uh, you'll be down before that, right? So uh, this really helped us. It, you could scale in and out, up and down, and it made it really convenient uh, for us. Right, I mean, one question here, might be, we might be thinking about, like, how actually it is helping in uh, reducing the server startup time, right? I mean, it doesn't make sense, right? I mean, just to give an example, like, like I, I was explaining V4, like when we are running on a bare metal, which is very good amount of core, very good amount of memory, used to run multiple JVMs there, right? Now that we are in a single JVM, single compute, uh, like then, so that actually helped a lot, right? That basically reduced a lot of uh, server startup time. And it's directly impacting our MTTR, like mean time to recover, because the instances is coming up faster, so it, it, in, in, when we are having an incident or anything, it's like we'll very, quickly bring up the sites because of your instances are coming up very fast. Moving on, uh, so this is a great help for uh, optimizing our capacity, right? I'm, I'm just, this is just an illustration. This doesn't uh, depict the actual numbers here, but I'm just giving you an example. Let's say now that we have got multiple sites running on the same cloud platform, and every site have a different peak, right? Or maybe you are running on uh, Boxing Day in Canada versus you are running Easter's in UK, or you are running some promotions in somewhere, right? For which you are, you can expect a traffic surge on your um, you, you expect traffic surge on your website, right? So, what is helping us here is like like we are actually very effectively moving the traffic, moving the workload from one side to the other side, right? The same uh, capacity which is required by the uh, which is used for the peak seasons uh, for the site A 
can, we basically scale down that and move that to the site C when they basically need it. So it, this doesn't need for us to maintain the capacity for the pick of site A plus B plus C and D, but having a balance across so that we can move around the capacity around so they can get used. You can use across. So with all that, what we did, uh, as explained earlier, how did we manage to do all this? Uh, so we, we use OneOps. OneOps was recently open sourced by Walmart Labs. And OneOps is basically the orchestrator for us that manages all our VMs across uh, the various clouds. It can be an OpenStack cloud, it can be a public cloud, it can be uh, Azure or AWS or a Rackspace cloud, and it enables the app team to deploy their VMs across uh, any of these clouds of choice, right? Uh, so that it basically comes down to a one-click uh, deployment. So how does OneOps play a role? What we have, uh, we have it in three different sections, right? So in the business executive section, from the business side of things, it enables you to do cloud shopping. You can go to any cloud provider, and uh, OneOps will enable you to manage the application lifecycle management uh, in that particular cloud. It totally avoids any vendor lock-in. It's open source, right? So you can go use it. Uh, the time to market. That's what you want, right? The speed to deliver, the time to market. It's uh, low cost and great value. Uh, then uh, moving along, for the developers, what does it give the developers? It gives them the self-service on demand, which basically enables them to build their packs, build their application, do the monitoring, look at all the uh, stats of CPU, mo uh, memory, everything, all that visualization in there in one ops at one place. Uh, it helps them to do the complete application lifecycle management, and it basically enables them to build their DevOps teams. Uh, the third part is the IT operations. Basically, it reduces costs. It's uh, good cost-effective cost, cost management. It has the governance that you need. You can enforce all your policies in there, and it control. It has control, and it secures your cloud use, usage. So it's safe, uh, usable. It's proven. We have used it uh, for three holidays now and it works really well. So we, we, we're going to deep dive more into what OneOps is, right? Okay. Let's go a little deeper into the OneOps, right? Again, as stated, like, uh, OneOps is, an, is our applications lifecycle management. So there are three different uh, uh, lifecycle or three different phase of the applications it's managed. It's design, transitions, and the operations, right? Uh, design, uh, you you take your applications, you define your, you design your applications how it should be. Your applications needs a Nginx, it needs a web server, it, ne it needs to have your max client set to some uh, 200 numbers, or maybe it's running on port 8080. So these are the different, different configurations you can set on your design layer. And you can actually version control it, you can actually make it part of your source control, so that any, any releases you can tie, tie together the design. Right? So you can define, design is kind of like template engines where you define how my applications looks like, which is, I think, Gerald was saying before, like the gold copy for say. So you define for this application, this is how the applications should be look like. So when, you, when in the design phase, you can very well define that, saying I need a web server, I need an app server, and so on. And how is the communication is going to happen between web server and app server? All those things you're going to define on your design layer. Moving on to the transitions layer, you take the same design, now try, to now try to realize it, and create the environment out of it. Right? That's what you do on the transitions layer. So in the transitions layer, you apply the same design. Keep in mind, apply the same design into, a de in into your uh, dev environment, into your QA environment, could, uh, to your stage environment, could be your production environment. So what you say here is like it is highly reliable in the sense you are absolutely sure the same design is been applied to all. Now, there are certain environment variables which change from one design, which change from one environment to another environment, which you can always do that on the transitions layer. But some of the base design, which you think like everybody um, on my application has to be running on this particular OS, right? Uh, or every JVM running has to be running on two gig of max size, right? So this you can confine, this you can enforce on the design layer. And the final one is is the operations mode, where you can, once you'll create the environment, once you'll uh, 
uh, select like, okay, I need to deploy that into cloud one, cloud two, cloud three, cloud four. Now, how do you operate uh, operate that applications? Operations mode will operations uh, phase will directly give you how do you start your server, how do you take uh, restart your instances, how do you take the entire cloud out of the traffic, uh, how do you monitor what is the use uh, what is the uses of all your applications? So these are all comes under the under the um, uh, operations mode, right? So these are the three different uh, phase of the application. The applications end to end uh, managed or lifecycle is end to end managed through the one ups. I think I do have a more uh, simpler view of one ups, right? Uh, where you say uh, you have an applications, you go through the design layer, and you create a different different configurations on the transitions layer. You have multiple uh, environments. Then you go to the operations mode where you select, okay, I want to deploy it in cloud one and in cloud two. So the key call out here is like, you see like you can actually deploy to any cloud. You can move your workload from cloud A to the cloud B, right? So seamlessly, it is there in the one of you go and basically move it from one. It could be your private cloud, it could be your public cloud. You can integrate that. One of is in already uh, uh, integrated. So you can actually move it any point of time. So um, again, these are some of the key major features we talked about. Um, applications lifecycle management. It uh, takes starting from the VM creations all the way to what security group needs to be there, what uh, VLAN has to be set up there. On top of that, what application needs to be configured there. Might I have a web server there, or it should be a uh, um, Tomcat running on there. Um, all the way to the creations of the VM, to all the way to the creations of the applications. Everything that you can do using this one up, right? Auto repair and auto replace. Another great features. Uh, you, you can set up uh, uh, a lot of monitoring, a lot of threshold within the within your applications. Uh, your applications having some heartbeat problem. Application having some particular threshold is not meeting, right? It's try to one of try to auto repair that VM. So it's kind of a self healing uh, concept uh, where it basically takes care of uh, takes care of repairing that VM by itself. If it doesn't work, it's try to replace that. So you have to be very sure about your applications on the design, like what you have said, like how my application has to be designed. Auto replace, uh, once the auto replace happens, once the auto replace generates the new VM, it basically goes through the design and, and reconfigure, reconfigure your application in the same way. Auto scale uh, is very uh, useful uh, for the, uh, when you are going through some peak seasons, having a lot of traffic is coming in. So we have set up certain, uh, certain threshold based upon which we can have a horizontal scale. Policy enforced, uh, like some of the uh, deployment I was talking about, uh, um, I definitely each application has to be deployed more than one uh, uh, clouds, more than one data centers. So those are some of the policy you can enforce it. So, um, so the key takeaway is again, like uh, we are trying to address like how we lifted and shifted is there are three things again uh, definitely you don't need the application has to be rewritten um, application need to be a micro service based uh, suddenly there are some changes that we have to do uh, that with the deployment mechanism with removing some of the ips um, and definitely you need some kind of an orchestration tool uh, like one ups right so this pretty much, uh, we are at the end of the sessions. We'd like to open it for any questions. You'll have to use the mic. So you were talking about having to re-engineer or uh, change the apps, you know, like no IP, static IP, things like this, right? Did you crack the code open and do code mods, or is there something that you wrap around it to make that possible? No, I mean, uh, pretty much all the, uh, I don't think in the code label you do have uh, the details about the IP, right? We basically looked at definitely on the applications layer to the different configurations layer to look at like how one application is talking to other applications, or even like in a, in a server, if, if there is an IP there, how that application is using that IP address. I understand so, at the app layer, but if I have an app that does that already, 
how do I shift that into this environment without cracking the code and making changes? Okay, so your question is like, my app is, is definitely on static, on looking at on, uh, dependent on my IP address. NFS, any of these, you had one slide, make sure it doesn't do these things, right? right? So, I mean, NFS, right? I mean, I, 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 like I talked about, right? We remove that, we use object stored in that, so we basically, when the app talk to an NFS having a mount on, on the bare metal, so we basically tweak that applications to use the rest best object storage so that we can basically doing it. So like, I mean, uh, yes, okay. I mean, there are some tweaking we have to do on the applications layer, not necessarily on the functional layer, but more on the, how, on the communications, like how we are talking to each other. Okay, Does that answer thank, you. The question? Yeah. thank you. The whole aim is to keep it really, really simple so you don't have to tweak a whole lot of things on it. Um, thanks for your presentation. This is interesting. Thank you. Um, but to follow on from that question, I was interested, you, you're talking about Apache and all the almost stateless layer, and then you were talking also about transactions. Where does the, uh, where does the data live? And are the databases involved in your, um, in your lift and shift as well? Yeah, good question. So, yeah, I mean, uh, we talked about purely on applications here. We didn't touch a lot on the, app, on the database here. Yes, at a, a database at this point, we are running on the bare metal. We are not virtualized at this point. So this migrations is purely working on how you move all the application stack to run there. Um, so database uh, is running on the bare metal. So it was not running on the cloud at that point. What kind of issues did you have when tackling availability for the applications, when taking them from legacy to the cloud? Uh, uh, so like uh, VMs can die much more easily than uh, you know, the bare metal on which they are running. Right. Uh, so, so how did you handle those scenarios? Right. I think uh, that is true that VM is dies uh, very frequently than a bare metal, right? Uh, that's, but the way we are handling is like we are basically l l taking the applications deployed into more than one instance. So we basically scale the applications or make it more resilient so that a single VM down has no impact to the application's availability. So we, in fact, increase the application's availability moving there because of because spreading across multiple zones, spread across multiple data center, so that way it will help us in moving, uh, I mean, getting more availability. Just to add to Rupesh, is, uh, OneOps has this awesome feature of auto repair. So you lose a VM, or let's say the app has an issue, uh, it'll try to do a number of repairs, like three auto repairs, it'll try to restart your Tomcats, uh, and it'll try to keep rebooting it. If it doesn't reboot, it'll do an auto replace, so it'll basically replace your VM with a new VM with code and with uh, the deployment in it. So. I just had a real quick one to follow up again. Was uh, Do you have plans for shifting your database into the cloud? I'm sorry, I missed the question. Do you have plans? If you're not yep. doing the database at this stage and yet you've outlined all these advantages, do you have plans for shifting the database into the Absolutely. cloud? Absolutely. I mean, we have already started that work in progress. We have been currently running uh, the, all the database in the non-production environment uh, for certainly, but still there is a lot of work needs to be done to make it work in the production layer. So, but uh, I'm talking about non-productions like Dave, QA environment, we are kind of like started running on that on the VM. Okay, thank you. I think you have a question. So um, thank you for doing this, this is very informative. Um, my question was related to um, the applications themselves when you're moving them to cloud. Generally, there's an expectation of horizontal scalability, right? So did you run into any applications which were not designed to be horizontally scalable and there was an inherent assumption in the design that it's, there is vertical scalability? Uh, and if so, how did you manage to get around that? I mean, session stickiness and all these other things. Yeah, uh, definitely. I mean, not necessarily each and every applications work or design to make uh, to have a horizontal scalability. Some of the applications we had to make certain changes, like I was talking about. We make that more like a message driven, so that we can break that single independency because of the single stickiness to the applications to a more horizontal one. We could able to do it, but certainly there are some applications we could not able to do that. So, and those applications we found out to be those just need to be running as one instance or two instance, we better kept it outside of the cloud platform. I see, okay. Um, that's the, I think that answers my question. Thank the, you. Thank the you. aim was not to force something in, yeah. because if you force it in and it breaks, you'll end up taking it around the entire right. site. So, right. so there, was, there was an assumption there that the application correct, did correct. not require significant changes correct. to move that, that was one of the main requirements that we do not have to yeah. significantly rewrite or redesign the app to put it in the cloud. Okay, perfect. Thank you.
Thank you very much again. Uh, once again, we'd like to thank you, all of you. And uh, uh, you, you guys can, for any questions, clarifications, reach out to us on uh, yes. the email address. Right. Thanks. Thank you.